For insulting the prophet, Iran condemns 64-year-old to public hanging. Public hanging. We went from stoning and crucifixion for being gay to public hanging for insulting some dude from hundreds of years ago who thinks he's the best of all men for all time. This is where we're at. In a chilling display of the harsh penalties faced by those challenging the Iranian regime, 64-year-old Shariar Bayat was sentenced to public hanging for insulting the prophet, a charge stemming from his participation in the 2022 Women Life Freedom protests ignited by the death of Masa Amini. Bayat, arrested amidst the widespread unrest for uh, initially for propaganda against the regime, insulting Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei, and spreading falsehoods on social media, was later condemned for his social media posts preceding the protests. This verdict underscores the relentless crackdown by the Tehran Criminal Court on dissent as Bayat's sentence sentences adds to the grim tally of over. 800 individuals executed last year, underscoring the regime's brutal suppression of free speech and protest. His death sentence is the latest in a series handed down by the Iranian government to those arrested for their involvement in the demonstrations, highlighting a relentless pursuit to quell any opposition through the most extreme measures. So, Let's back up, provide a little background for those who don't know. And if you're on Atheist Republic, you you already know. So in 2022, in uh, September of 2022, there was a Kurdish girl. Her name was Masa Amini, and she was traveling to Tehran, and she was approached by the morality police for improper hijab. She was wearing the hijab. It was just not good enough for them. And in the process of her being detained, she was beaten so severely that she died three days later and this ignited a uprising that was the largest threat to the regime's power since the islamic revolution in 1979 there were more um like irgc guards that were killed in this uprising than in any others before hundreds of civilians were killed shot dead in the streets over 20,000 people were detained. Uh, there was well, 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 well documented uh, systematic RAPE of protesters, both male, female, and children. Systematic torture, systematic black zones where detained protesters would be taken to. Uh, I mean, where do we even go? close to if not over a hundred children killed in this protest um the irgc ground forces were deployed upon civilians in entire towns i mean kurdistan itself was under heavy bombardment we're just talking like open full-scale war against like a civilian population it was really really bad so during this time immediately with around um what time of year was it anyways there were several there have been nine protesters so far that have been executed for their involvement with these protests and then this man 64 years old is now also newly sentenced to death not only for his involvement in these protests against the regime's oppression but also apparently for posts made preceding his participation in the protest some which are somehow deemed to be insulting the prophet muhammad which is obviously blasphemy which is punishable by death and also insulting uh you know the ayatollah khamenei insults against the regime, spreading propaganda against the regime, all those, you know, dissent thought-based crimes. Um, what exactly he did that was deemed as, like, blasphemous is not clear. I could not find that on English-speaking media about, um, the, about, about, about his crime and his, about his charges. So what he said, I don't know, because oftentimes what is accused of being blasphemous or insulting or insulting to Islam, blah, 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 is like 
super tame. And let's not forget that even if it was insulting against Islam, even if it was criticizing, even if it was mocking, obviously no one should be killed for this. <laughs> so, Armin, have you heard anything about this in, in Persian language media? Yes. Okay, well, tell me what you know. There's very little in English. In the, on, the, on the Discord, on the, on the Persian Discord server that we have, a lot of people were talking about this. And uh, they wanted us to bring, they were asking me to bring attention to this. And I mean, you did it with, even without my, me asking. So thank you for that. Um, I just want to address this. First of all, a lot of people might wonder why, why? Because right now in Iran, there's a lot of hatred against Islam. More than any country in the world like there is not a single other country some people might say india but i think in india first of all we have a uh, i think the tension is between against the muslims themselves right against the, yeah but in iran the tension is not against the muslims because a lot of people you know are fa you know the family members the people who are against islam you know they have also a lot of friends and family that are muslims themselves right so i think when it comes to hatred of islam as a religion Iran is the number one country in the world. That's my, based on what I've seen, that's my belief. And this hatred for Islam, it's also a huge challenge to the Islamic Republic of Iran, the government, because more and more people are turning against the government to a point that if it's going this way, it's going to be almost impossible for the government to be able to maintain its power. So you would think, you would think that if you are, trying to be preserving your power or trying to survive, you would tone it down, right? There is, if somebody is insulting the prophet or doing, there's nothing, you know, we know there's this doesn't harm anybody, right? There is, and we have this, a lot of us atheists are, have this uh, wrong belief that religious people um, are just, completely idiotic when it comes to their strategies and everything they do is completely stupid that there's no um we think we mistake evilness with idiocy we think that if you're evil and you do evil things you also must be an idiot but that's not the case so i mean for a regime the islamic republic of iran has survived a lot of threats to itself for the past 40 years they must be doing something right they must understand how to survive so the question is why would they do this wouldn't this be a bigger threat to themselves given that how many people that the reason why so many iranians are now against the government is exactly because of stuff like this this is what these this stuff has turned the people against the government so you might you might think why would they do this like i wonder if people in the live chat beyond this like oh these are just religious morons because no they know how to survive so why, given that all the backlash against them, and especially at this time where things are so sensitive, where more people are turning against the government, why would they execute a 64-year-old man for insulting the prophet? Why not? Here, here's the thing. Even if you want to execute the man, why not make up and say that, oh, he was causing chaos, like he was um, in the protest, he, I don't know, attacked uh, uh, our armed forces or something like this. Why do you insist on making it Islamic? And given that Islam, even even this is not a security threat to the regime or something, like if somebody insult the prophet, like what is this going to do, right? So what is what do you think? Did, did anybody have any answer for this? I mean, I I know, but why? One, I have my I have two answers. One of them is to just show show force, show power, and to cause fear. Uh, the second one would be to signal to this tiny base that does still support them. That's like, okay, you, you perfect, exactly. Say. A lot of people say, well, Sharia says that. Okay, but again, you have to understand that Sharia is not the goal. Sharia is the tool. Religion, for a lot of people, if, here's the thing. If you are a religious uh, group, that the religion is the goal, you're not going to survive that long. You're going to be like ISIS, and eventually you're going to die out, right? 
for most people that actually manage to more religious groups that manage to actually stay get power and stay in power religion is the tool like it's the weapon so it cannot be just because they're going to do everything that sharia says because the goal is to stay in power the goal is to rule over people so if it's a threat against their power they're not going to do it just because sharia says so they're going to do the parts of sharia that is going to help them so it's exactly the two things that Susanna said. First of all, because they want to, because if it, it, a lot of them, not everything in the Islamic Republic of Iran, they, they're not all unanimous when it comes to their opinions. They are they're different parts of the Islamic Republic. Some of them agree with this, some of them disagree with this. Uh, they're all evil, but again, the strategy, there's disagreement uh, within, the, within the government. But the, the, the ones who think this is a good idea, is because they want to show to the public that they're not going to back down, that they have teeth, because they, they still have power. They still can, that for you to be afraid, because they think that if they back down, it's going to signal to the people that their anti-Islamic protest, the anti-government protest is working. And they want to make sure that they do not show weakness to the public. And they also... I I have been convinced, I might be wrong about this, that it's being unreasonable is part of the design because you have to be, they want to make you think that you don't know if this is going to happen to you or not. They want the randomness of it, the insanity of it, the it's being over something that you might have thought before that they're not going to execute over this. All of this is meant to think like, I might be next. This is a, this is all chaotic. There's no order to this for you to be extra, extra careful about your behavior. So this is one reason. But the most important reason is exactly what Susanna said. The Islamic Republic has made a Frankenstein monster that is now coming after Dr. Frankenstein, which is a base that is insanely radical and they want full on Sharia barbaric sharia to the to to the to the max as much as you can get right and did you learn nothing for... from the house of Saud? look at right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly kind of like kind of like the relationship between al-qaeda and saudi arabia spreading wahhabism as a weapon across the world eventually came back and at the house of um the, you know Saud uh itself right but for many years these radical elements, you know, in the, that Islamic, the Islamic Republic had created, used to be more loyal to the Islamic Republic, right? So, if you, after the 1979 Islamic Revolution in Iran, we had two competing movements. We had the Islamic Republic spreading its Velayat Faqih or Khomeinism ideology across the world, um, and the House of Saud, as a reactionary movement to that, spread Wahhabism across the world. But the problem is that the Wahhabism turned on the, the House of Saud a lot earlier because they didn't have a good leash on it, right? Uh, but the Ayatollahs in Tehran, they had a stronger leash on the radicals that they were creating. How, on, up until just the Mahsa Revolution. So up until the Mahsa Revolution, I would have said that the puppets of the ayatollahs are a lot loyal, more loyal to the ayatollahs than the puppets of the Saudis. But the Mahsa revolution ended all of that. And the radicals that the Islamic Republic had created is now turning in, turning on the Islamic Republic for not being radical enough. And these are some hungry uh, radical, like they want full, they want blood. They are thirsty for blood. And they are think they think that the Islamic Republic of Iran is not Islamic anymore. They think that they're losing the Islamism of their country. So we have two revolutionary movements now being created in Iran. One is the secular anti-religious um, revolutionary movement. But now we have, in parallel to that, an Islamic revolutionary movement who thinks that the government is turning on them. The government is giving in to the people. The government is uh, being too mellow is like just letting it, letting women not have a job. A lot of Islamic rules are not being enforced. And they are saying that if you, you should be more afraid of us than you are of that other revolutionary movement. Because they're saying the secular revolutionary movement, these are just kids that are just too 
weak and pathetic to fight. We have we have been part of war. Like the the Islamic Revolutionary Movement, which are much lower in number, they they say, okay, we might be lower in number, but here's the thing: we have been trained in battle. One, two, we love to die. Like we are not afraid of martyrdom. The other secular revolutionary movement and in we Iran. We love death more they than are, we love life. How can you defeat a yeah. movement that loves death? That's what they say. If you, this is what I hate, don't go listen to what these people say in English. Listen to what they say amongst themselves in their own language, and they say it plainly and they say it proudly that we love death more than you love life. And how can you ever defeat us when we love our own death? Sorry, I'm sorry right, to interrupt. Right. So the secular, the secular revolutionary movement in Iran, they are a bunch of life lovers, and they use life lovers as an insult, right? But we are, we are, and also a smear martyrdom. against the Jews. It's also explicitly a smear right. against the Jews to call them life lovers. Right, right, right. But we love martyrdom. We love death, exactly like Susanna said, more than you love life. Uh, and they say you should be afraid of us. And here's the thing: they, it's true. It's true. So he. The Islamic Republic of Iran, the popularity of it in Iran has dropped below 10%, okay? Um, I, I'm guessing maybe around 8% or something, I think, okay? But if that eventually gets to 5%, I don't know, 4%, it, it could, it's almost impossible to keep the government if it drops below that. So the, the, the remaining 8%, let's say 8% that the Islamic Republic ha has, um, is I'm so sorry. The remaining eight percent that it has is basically this religious maniacs, and they are also turning on the government because it's not Islamic enough. So the Islamic Republic of Iran it needs to satisfy these people, and what I've but by the way I in the, these people that I'm talking about I am in their social media groups I am watching their YouTube videos I'm in their uh, Telegram groups I'm in their clubhouse rooms I'm listening to what these people are saying right. And the main thing that seems to satisfy them is blood. So executions. They want executions. So when you see during these executions... The, sorry. During the Masa yeah. Revolution, they were literally walking through holding signs in the street, literally asking the government why there is not blood running down the sidewalks. I'm not making yes. this up. They had hashtags. They had hashtags saying execute more in Persian. Hashtag more executions. That's what they were holding. Um, and so again, so when you see Islamic Republic of Iran doing something like this, they actually know what they're doing. They need these executions to survive. They are feeding their base. Anyways. No, I mean, I completely agree. And I think that's like a really important way to, to look at this. Did you, um, so for those who don't know, we have a whole branch, a whole arm of Atheist Republic that is in Persian. So if you speak Persian, go to Jumhuri Bihodayan and you can watch Armin have some very, very juicy, juicy, juicy streams. Um, mm -hmm. And we have a very, very active uh, Persian speaking Discord community with a huge, very active community still living inside Iran. Um, so did you hear any more details about this case? from anyone on the the persian community no this is like okay. completely behind kurt like this is everything you said is all i know so this is like not much more information is coming by the way thank you mm -hmm. for highlighting this because not many people are talking about this so i really appreciate no, it i mean thank you. you know how i feel about how it's like so important to really really boldly um and unabashedly support people accused of blasphemy um because we know how deadly it is um and you know, there were ex-Muslims in Iran executed, like, within the past year. Like, this isn't, this isn't hypothetical. We know that this threat is very, 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 very real. Um, right. But thank you for all that insight you gave us. Um, oh, thank you. What, actually, as a side note, I have a question. Um, what do you think about the crazy, crazy, very severe increase in uh, executions in Iran within mm. the past year, a year and a half? Um, like unprecedented, yes. like oh. record levels of executions within within the past year and so a half. So two points. It comes again. The, it ha it's happening because of the exactly the two things that we just mentioned. Okay. However, one thing I want to point out. 
is a lot of the executions are of drug dealers. So there are ma- the two executions that people pay attention that are um, the two main executions that are happening in Iran. Well, like series three. OK, so it's either because they're drug dealers two because they're murderers, three because they are uh, prisoners of conscience, like prisoners who have um, ideological political differences. Or political, political prisoners, right? All right. So executions, executions in Iran are higher per capita than any country in the world, right? So remember these three. Number one, drug dealers. Number two, murderers. Number three, uh, dissenters, like people who are either anti-Islam or anti-government, the Okay. This last one gets a lot of attention, okay? And the Islamic Republic knows that. Islamic Republic uses the execution of murderers and especially drug dealers with high volumes because they know nobody cares about them. And that's actually very dangerous. Um, the, if, the, if the Islamic Republic executes somebody because of Islam or because they're a political, they have, you know, they're part of the anti part of the protest, we come and support them. But the drug dealers and the murderers, like who would want to support a murderer? Well, I, I want to support a murderer, okay? Because executions are wrong. And because drug dealers and murderers, no, not that many people come and speak for their human rights. Um, the, but the high volume of executions is also a signal to the population that the government is strong, that the government doesn't care about your life that the government does, is not afraid of killing people. And it does have, you know, a scare, it's a scare tactic that works. But it's important that we also speak for the drug dealers and the murderers, because I don't care if you're, you know, if you're a murderer, I'm against you, but you should be in prison forever, maybe something like that. I don't know. But you shouldn't be executed. We have to speak, when it comes to human rights, we have to speak for the worst people. You know, it's not, human rights is not, uh, good human rights is every human right. Murderers do not deserve to be executed. Murderers should just go to prison. Drug dealers shouldn't be executed. Murderers shouldn't be executed. So it's important that we defend even the worst of people, which includes murderers, right? So yeah. we do need some more activism, just n- just no to executions. Um, even if the Islamic Republic of Iran was not executing any political dissenters or anybody that was blaspheming and all their executions were drug dealers or murderers, uh, there should have there should be a heavy campaign against them because you know execution doesn't any the government shouldn't have the right to be able to just take your life away like that. That's insane. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to be sympathetic towards them. That's not what people are right. asking. It's just like they do right. have rights. Um, they have rights. Although there, Iran does have a history of executing women who were child brides at the time of their marriage who then ended up murdering their husbands who were abusing them. There are many cases within the past few years alone of Iran executing a lot of women who were survivors of child marriage who then went on to murder their abusers um in an attempt to escape and to go ahead and kill those women um because child marriage does happen at a surprising rate in iran i I remember when we were looking up the statistics armin was like no way like you can believe it or how much honor violence actually still happens in iran um uh so now it's time for some super chats um Dana gave us celebrating her membership for one month. Thank you, Dana, for joining. Welcome to Satan's Minions, if I didn't say hello already. Saying, hey, Susanna and Armin, happy Saturday. Technically, it's Sunday, but I still appreciate it. It's the Lord's Day. Come on, woman. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, uh, Oh, this is a comment. Sar is saying the Iranian regime would not have survived this long if it wasn't for Western appeasement. And I believe this more and more more and more with every coming day um oh yeah mm, 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 mm. um we got a super chat thank you from co compost the apr saying cracking jokes in the chat is the only thing making it possible to listen to this crap how do Susanna and armin stare into the void like this over and over and over all hail well i've been doing it for close to four years armin has been doing it for close to 20 years at this point 
<laughs> so I don't really, I don't know how Ehrman does it, but this is how I think about it. Cause I know a lot of people, we hear about these things and this is issues we care about. These are issues we focus on and it can be so depressing sometimes. But the way I think about it is that no matter what happens, I spoke out regardless of the consequences or threat to myself over something I'm passionate about and have a sense of conviction over. And regardless of what happens, I did what I could to speak out against something I think is wrong. And then the rest is out of my control and I have to be stoic about it and I have to release it. But what is within my control is that I speak out, that I dissent. And I cannot play a victim because there are consequences to my life because of that. That's my responsibility. That's something that I chose. I can be frustrated by it. I cannot like it. Trust me, I don't love it. But I cannot pretend like I'm a victim because I made that active decision knowing full well what the consequences would be. I have to hold myself accountable in that sense. But I know within myself that I spoke out with the strength of my convictions and the rest is out of my control and my power. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Um, so next super chat is from GJ. Thank you, GJ, saying my two Iranian Dutch friends criticize Islam but still identify as Muslims. One spontaneously approached me to show me George Carlin's religious is BS skit with Farsi subtitles on her phone. You know, this is actually not that surprising to me. There are many people that actually have a lot of criticism of their own country, of their own culture, of their own religion, where they come from, but still identify that as part of their background right? Or maybe there are elements of it that they like, that they pick, that they feel a sense of closeness or familiarity to, but they don't have to love all of it. They don't have to subscribe to all of it. Or maybe for some people, it's more cultural. Like Ali Rizvi calls himself a cultural Muslim. There are lots of people that don't like that label, but there are some people that feel like that fits them the same way that Richard Dawkins has been calling himself a cultural Christian since the early 2000s. You know, so it's not as black and white as people think. You don't just plug the Quran into someone's brain and they operate like a freaking robot and just adopt everything and they're completely uncritical to everything. There are a lot of Muslims that don't like the behavior of their own community, that don't like the causes that they support, the stances that they take. It's it, To me, in a sense, it's not, that's not that surprising. Um, but... Um, I do love the George Carlin with the the Farsi subtitles. There's oh my god! If do like do people in Iran know about George Carlin, Armin? Because like his his content and their specials, they would love him. Oh my god, that would resonate so much with them. Yeah, um, I see some of his work being with Persian subtitles. I've seen it. I don't know awesome. how widespread they are, but I've seen. Um. <laughs> Comment by saying. Zane is saying 20 years. Sometimes I forget that Armin is <laughs> You're the one that highlighted that. Is there something about that that you would like to address? I, no, no, I, just, I just wanted to take the compliment. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my god, Tema said Armin must have remembered when dinosaurs were on. <laughs> okay, I didn't know. I'm I didn't know we're getting to that point where we could make these jokes, but okay. I You're guess. the one highlighting it. I know, yeah. <laughs> you always get hit make jokes about your age. Should I start calling you right. Baba Bazorg? <laughs> <laughs> What's the other one? Pyramid. <laughs> Pyramid, yes. Pyramid man. <laughs> oh, somebody, Muhammad is saying, Armin, mm -hmm. how old are you actually? Forty. I'm forty years old. Oh my god, so funny. Um, and Dana just gave us a super sticker with no comment. Thank Can you. you see what the super sticker is on your phone? 
because we don't get them on oh. StreamYard. Oh yeah, you're right. Let me check. I have to scroll all the way up. Oh, it's a cat. It's a black cat. Oh, that's cute. Amichai is asking Baba what? Baba Bazork, which directly translated means big daddy, but it is how people call grandpas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah in, Pers in Persian, when you want to say grandpa, you say big daddy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Um okay, so we got oh. some super chats by GJ. GJ is saying at Armin, delegate to more free volunteers, hire. And also thank you for the large super chat saying, Oh, and when I suggest more QA time, including Susanna, it wasn't primarily for myself, but for A the European, European Middle Eastern and African time zone world slash B time for Susie to rant and unload and C my own <laughs> off topic chats to be less disruptive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I appreciate it. I know that the demand is there. I used to have a lot more time to do a lot more Q and A's like about two years ago, Armin and I would do a Q and A basically every week. Um, but I just I just don't have time for that right now in my life. But I want to. Like, I do really want to. And even if, like, it's it's not entirely about um, just having more volunteers and stuff, you know, outside of uh, my Atheist Republic responsibilities. Like, I have other demands on my time, like personal matters and things. Um, and H.G. Drake just gave a super sticker. Thank you, Drake. <laughs> Peter you. Bergensen is saying, you technically say Big Daddy in, e in English as well. Yes. Grandpa. Grandfather. You know what? You're right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Except the translation in Farsi is way more literally Big Daddy. And I just think that's so funny. What I love is that in Farsi, like, if you, their equivalent of calling someone, like, man in a slang way, like, come on, man, like, like that is, is Baba. So I, I love just hearing, like, my Iranian guy friends talk to each other and imagine that instead of calling each other, like, hey, man, Baba, Baba, they're like, hey, daddy, Baba. <laughs> they're constantly calling each other daddy. I don't know. That's just funny to me. Um. And uh, what else? Oh, okay. So also Kurosh is saying, hey, we are almost at 50K. That is right. The Atheist Republic militia is growing. The army is growing. Our movement is accelerating. And that means <laughs> that if you are one of the hundreds of people currently watching us live on Twitter, you should come over and subscribe to us on YouTube because we do this all the time. You have to hit that bell notification so you know when we're going live because Armin is going live almost every single day. It's damn impressive. Oh. And and um, yeah, we make good no, content. You have to know when we're doing this every week. Yeah, yes. I'm doing actually like three or three times a week now because I'm doing nice. a lot more edited videos. But yes, and shorts. We're making a lot more short videos and edited videos. But yeah. But that is a good reminder for everyone to subscribe, to like subscribe. the stream, to yes. comment when the stream is done because it helps the algorithm. Because the only God that we believe in is the YouTube algorithm God. Oh, yes. And. <laughs> Yes. Help us you help send us prayers with a like. Yes. Help comes. us tithe. Help us make penance to the algorithm gods. Zaid is also saying we are not an armed militia for legal purposes. That's a joke. Yes, but yes. For now. Never mind. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. We also are um uh I I'm excited to hit that 50k that 50k mark that's going to be huge because guys yeah. what you need to understand is like once you hit certain benchmarks with subscriber and engagement rates it snowballs like crazy so i know that yeah. once we hit some of these benchmarks because a lot of people are like you make such good content you have such good commentary why do more people not know you because we need 
to hit those benchmarks and hit that snowball, you know, and you guys can help us get there. Um, and also, if you want to support this show to make sure that we can continue to do what you do, we do you can support us with super chats or those little gifts on youtube or you can donate um in the the bar on youtube because the, the atheist republic is a 501c3 they they waive all the fees and stuff or in the description you can find um support for us on paypal you can support us monthly you can send us checks i mean we have a lot of options um because it is because of you guys keeping the show alive that we continue to do what we do and stir up trouble while we do it. <laughs> um, Armin, you highlighted this. Um, oh. Johnny saying, Lord Jesus died on the cross for sinners and became alive on the third day. Is there something you wanted to address? Yes, I, I just want to say that uh, that's a breach of contract. Okay, because uh, <laughs> the, agree no, that, the, the agreement was that Jesus dies for your sin okay so he should have just remained dead so jesus if he mm. came back if, if he if he came back from the dead then jesus didn't die for our sins jesus basically took a nap for our sins okay the, the understanding is that jesus will die and my sins were forgiven so given that he did not stay that dead our sins are not forgiven guys jesus breached the contract the agreement that we have had the whole thing is the whole thing is over the whole thing is off your sins are not forgiven and yeah christianity is you know nullified out of whatever mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. just want to make sure people um, understand it. so okay we have oh we got a few more things shami is saying a special show for 50k we should 100 percent do a special show for 50k armin we need to come up with some good oh, ideas yeah. can we do let's just do a q like gj keeps wanting asking for a q a let's do a q a for a 50k if yeah. you have time something special to it we can add something special guys when the stream is over comment what you want yeah. to see for our 50k special that's actually a great idea um and Angel is saying, at 50K, I am going to give a $500 super chat. You guys are awesome. Wow. So let's 50K fast, guys. Holy cow. That's crazy. Think of wow. this as a matching campaign. You know how they're like, oh, I will match you up to $20,000, blah, blah, blah. So you can double your impact now. Thank That's what you. Angel is pledging to do right now. Wow. And all you have to do is hit subscribe for free. Um. Baphomet Buster also just gave us a super sticker. Thank you. Um, Gaijin American just gave another super chat saying, <laughs> the Monkey King was trapped for 500 years so demons and Satan can reach enlightenment. Does that mean that we're going to unleash the Monkey King again at 50k? No. <laughs> and Wizard World, Wizard Words is asking for a Q&A at 50k. It kind of rhymes. And GJ is saying, Thank you for the super chat, GJ. And in English, great grandfather. I guess a big, big daddy. Um, All right. Ooh. We did it. Huh. Yes, we did it. Guys, again, I'm going to go, but don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification after the show is over. Make sure you leave a comment under the show. The comments really help us out. So please go ahead and do that. If you're watching this anywhere else, other than YouTube, please come to our YouTube channel, Atheist Republic on YouTube, and subscribe to, uh, uh, to us on YouTube. And also, uh, last thing, please go tell people, go tell your friends and your enemies to come and subscribe to Atheist Republic on YouTube. Word of mouth is the best way to grow the channel. Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube blasphemous art ever? We do. And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.